Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of the Word for the Moment video blog. Um, I want to do a follow-up uh, session today on a fascinating subject. I started it last, uh, the last blog, talking about the fourth dimension. We have kind of led into this uh, new series after having done several sessions on uh, tasting the good Word of God and the powers of the age to come. I want to kind of continue that. I'm not wanting to divert from one to go into the other. I feel like they're related, that we are a people as we come into a place of maturity, as the mature sons of God, as I have often said, the huios sons of God, that before the end of the age come, the end of this age comes, there will be a body of people that taste the good word of God and the powers of the coming age, the millennial age, the kingdom age. We are to be kingdom people. And there is a revelation that is coming that will transform the people of God. Not is coming, is now here. I believe that we're moving into it now. I believe we're seeing the introductions of it now. And it's going to begin to break off of us a lot of the religiosity and the traditions of men and the methods and formulas that have been utilized by so many to try to gather the people. Instead, this is going to be a manifestation of the good word of God and millennial power, real, true, genuine millennial power. And to do that, I believe we have to begin to understand that we are not merely three-dimensional people. We live in another realm, the, what I've called the fourth dimension. I'm not the first person to use that phrase. The first person I heard use it was William Branham, so I'm not trying to say this thought process starts with me, but I want to kind of build off of it that we are not like everyone else. If you're a born-again believer, you have the seed of God inside of you. That, that is a revelation. I want to just pause with that. It's a revelation to know that, you know, I'm not just born again. I have the seed of my Father abiding inside of me. We started that last series from Isaiah, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11.3 where it says in Hebrews 11:3, by faith we know that everything that's made, everything that we see in this three-dimensional realm was made from what is unseen. So therefore, automatically from that verse, we know there is another dimension from which everything that is seen in this dimension originates. And we know by the Bible that it originates by the spoken word of God. Now I know I got a, a number of emails from some of you and, <clears throat> you know, this is not deep stuff. This is Christianity 101. It really is. We need to understand this. We need to understand we are fourth dimension people. Another realm lives inside of us. Christianity 101. This is not super mystical stuff. The God of creation has chosen to take up his abode and live inside of a body of people. Just so you have the scripture, Isaiah eleven three 3, by faith. We understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God, the spoken Word of God, so that what is seen, this three-dimensional world, was not made from that which is visible, a fourth-dimension realm. And what I touched on in the last blog was that the laws of this three-dimensional world that everyone else lives in are governed by another set of laws. There are another set of laws from the fourth dimension that supersede the laws of this three-dimensional world. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ when he walked on water and multiplied bread and fish. You might say, well, of course, he was the Son of God, but he did so under the anointing of the Holy Spirit being led by his Father, which is precisely the calling and commission that is placed upon you and I. We are called to do the same thing. In fact, the Bible says the works that he did shall we do also, and even greater works than these shall we do. Now, back to a thought that I introduced just a moment ago. I want to read the scripture because it is vital for this hour. It is crucial. I want to ask that the spirit of revelation permeate your heart right now. That this would not just be words from a book. This would not just be words that someone has spoken, but that a spirit of illumination will be attached to these words as I read them so that you will be transformed because this revelation will transform the sons of God, the body of Christ. 
No one who is born of God practices sins. Here it is. Because His seed abides in us. And He cannot sin because He is begotten of God. His seed abides in us. The seed of the living God abides in us. That makes you a new creation. That makes you a peculiar people. You're automatically not like everybody else. No one else on the planet can claim to have this dimensional relationship unless they are born again. No one except a born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ can say that the seed of our Father abides in us. The very sperma seed of the creator of the universe resides in the heart of a... I'm, I'm repeating this purposely because this is such an incredible revelation. That's why. That's why it says you're neither Jew nor Gentile. It doesn't matter because you have another seed inside of you. The seed of God resides in you and that supersedes everything else. No need to get involved in endless genealogies and all these different things. Someone asked me one time, recently in fact, are you going to have this ancestry thing done? And I, I get it. That's, that, that's interesting. But the, my response is, I felt like the Lord told me, listen, there's only one seed that matters. It's my seed. And that, that supersedes everything else. The seed of God resides in us. That means He took a little piece of, that's eternal life. Inside of you resides eternal life because it came out of God. A little deposit of himself and was put inside of you. And inside of that seed are his invisible attributes, his divine nature, and his eternal power in that seed. It's on the inside of you. And I want to draw a distinction between that and the anointing that comes upon you to do the work of service. Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach the gospel and to deliver the oppressed and set it at liberty the captives and so on it goes. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to produce wisdom and revelation, counsel and might, knowledge and the reverential fear of God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's one thing. But something else is at work also. The seed of God within me which transforms me as an individual, which releases on the inside of me His invisible attributes, His divine nature, and His eternal power. When the Lord Jesus walked the earth before He was anointed, but before His Jordan River experience, He was God. He was the nature of God manifested. The Bible says so. He was the express image of the Father, the exact representation of His nature. That was what was on the inside of Him. The very invisible attributes of God resided inside that tabernacle of flesh. But when he was baptized in the Jordan River, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him to then go out and do the miraculous, to begin to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed, and so on it goes. Two functions of the Spirit. And right now the one I'm wanting to emphasize is this fourth dimension realm that exists inside of us by faith. It is the realm of faith. Listen to what Peter says. Since you have an obedience, this is 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 22. Since you have an obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not with a perishable seed, but with an imperishable seed. An imperishable, incorruptible seed of the fourth dimension realm, the realm of faith, resides inside of a born-again believer. Therein you have access to that dimension. You have access to the realm of God. What is our access to the Father? The Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lamb of God. No man comes to the Father. I don't care how persuaded someone is. I don't care how many billions of people might follow another religion. No man comes to the Father but through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Period. End of discussion. That's the Word of God. 
And because of that, we are born again. And we have access to another dimension. We have access to another realm. I've had two experiences in my life where I was allowed to see a vision of the Lord Jesus. And when, in, the very, in the first one, I was watching him kind of standing holding a ruler, like a 12-inch ruler. And I'm coming up from his left, and I'm, he's very intently looking at this ruler. And I walk up in my visionary encounter, and I said, Lord, what is that? And he's still looking at the ruler, and he says, It is time, because time is measured. Time is not eternal. Time comes out of God created time. And therefore, he can manipulate time. He can take a prophet, as we see clearly demonstrated in the Old Testament and the New, and pick them up in the timelines of time and show them the past. We see that with Moses. We see that with the prophets. They see the past, the present, and even the future. Daniel clearly outlined and, and described future nations that rule the earth. And John, of course, in the, on the island of Patmos, and so many examples where we see the Lord taking a person outside of time, giving them a panoramic view of the future or of the past, and they come back and begin to describe it. Why? Because we are fourth dimension people. We, don't, we are not confined to the element of time because of this seed that, that abides in us that contains the invisible attributes of God. If a seed comes out of my Father, your Father inside of you, what is God? God is love, God is light, and God is life. So therefore, that's exactly what we are. I got to be honest with you, I wrote in one of my books an experience I had that I really, at that time, did not even fully understand, but I'm become, beginning to more fully understand it now. And I, I'll just ex give you one portion of it because I don't want my blog to be too long. But in an experience, we were on a battlefield and the Lord stopped the process of the battle because the people of God were not ready for what was coming. And immediately I was snatched up out of off the battlefield, as it were, taken into some room that looked like it was a heavenly room. And I was looking at myself laying on a table with seven or eight angels around the table. And I watched these angels very meticulously, very focused, working on what looked like me. <laughs> and they were just stripping away, stripping away layers of flesh, one after another. And I looked over the shoulders of the angels on the table and I could see myself and I stepped away for just a moment and they were working feverishly and then I stepped back up to the table and I pulled myself up over their shoulders because they were each quite a bit taller than I was and I looked over their shoulders down on the table and I saw nothing but a pulsating little orb of, of light, amber colored light just kind of pulsating there on the table. and I. I said in my visionary encounter, I said, where am I? <laughs> and the angel pointed to this little pulsating orb of light and said, right there. And basically, and now I understand, they had stripped me away so that all that was left of me was the seed of God. The thoughts of God deposited inside of me as to what I or you or whomever it would happen to be were designed to be. And they began to put me back together. And, and I, I realized, of course, that when I was put back together, it was no longer the flesh as I had known it, but it was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. But on the inside was the life of God, the invisible attributes, the divine nature, and the eternal power of God that makes you and I four dimen fourth dimensional people. I fully realize there may be many dimensions. I get that. But for the sake of this discussion, I am saying fourth dimension to acknowledge the realm of faith as another dimension, the eternal realm, the realm from which God created and spoke into existence everything that we see in this three-dimensional world. And the point I'm wanting to emphasize here is that we are called to live our life not bound by this three-dimensional existence but we are called to live our life from another dimension. And I can hear your thoughts already. We need a scripture. I got one for you. Colossians chapter 3. Set your mind on things above. 
Set your mind on the fourth dimension realm. Set your mind on the unseen realm. Set your mind on the realm in which God exists. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Don't focus on this three-dimensional world. Don't be bound by the laws of this three-dimensional existence. Set your mind on, a, on another realm, on another dimension, on the realm of the Spirit, the eternal realm, where the laws of the Spirit of life in Christ supersede the laws of sin and death that permeate the three-dimensional world. I'll read the whole scripture without stopping. Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. How do we live our life from the fourth dimension realm? By setting your mind on things above. By setting your mind on things above. That's what we have. That's the Word of God. Set your, don't be focused on this world. Be focused on another. Our citizenship is not of this realm. Our citizenship is in heaven by which we are being transformed from our humble state into conformity with the body of His glory through the exertion of the power He has to subject all things to Himself. So my word to you today is how do I live from a fourth dimension realm? By focusing on things above. By setting my mind, my conscious, my, my imagination even, every part of my existence, I'm not going to be bound by what my eyes see. I'm going to live my life according as best I can to what the illumination of my heart is and what the Word of God says. Word, what does the Word say? Now, you might say, how does that, say, how does that look practically? Well, I, for me, I'm trying my best daily to begin to just focus on things I have seen, things I know are from God, personal experiences that I've had that I know are from the unseen realm, whether it be encounters with the Lord or whether it be some kind of great inspiration or divine visitations or being called away into something in the Spirit. I set my mind. I'm focusing on that. I, I am doing my best to... To, to allow the Holy Spirit to open the panoramic vision of my heart, to let the life of the seed within me to be released inside of me so when the Spirit comes upon me, I can have the Holy Spirit without measure. The Lord did. The unlimited anointing, the Holy Spirit without measure. Why? Because the life of God in him had, it was so perfect that he could handle the anointing without measure. There's two different things. That's a two different thing. Do you realize that the Bible teaches the Spirit can come upon you without there being this transformation in you? Ask Judas Iscariot. That's one of the mysteries of God. Judas Iscariot that the Bible said was a devil healed the sick, cast out devils because the Spirit came upon him, but there was no seed of God in him. Two things, God's seed working in me, God's Spirit coming upon me. Lord Jesus, give us this revelation. It will transform your bride. It will transform the sons of the kingdom. I am asking that as I speak these words, something will be released into the realm of the Spirit right into the hearts of the people that are listening that this would strike that seed. <laughs> That seed of God, that invisible attributes of God, His divine nature would be awakened in a greater way and that life would be so completely released from the seed within that it permeates every cell of our existence so that the Spirit can come upon us to go out and do the works that Christ did and even greater works. Grant that, Lord, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.